definitely has the potential. Hey. Do you uh, think the the front row of the ABs uh, starting lineups got eighty minutes in them, or uh, no, they what won't. do you think's going to happen <clears throat> once we start getting to the bench? No, they'll they'll do what they. I think I think um, personally, I think for for me, when I look at the current like team, I think they won't change much. So you'll still have a Tamati Williams, you know, from the bench with. Um, <clears throat> who's, who's from the bench uh, with Newell so they'll play T- Tamati Williams and Newell from the bench <clears throat> which has been pretty good from the bench you know um, especially Tamati Williams has been really good um, and then uh, of course also the hookers um, I, I feel Sami Sony Takeo is really good from the bench because um, he just he's, he's got that kind of power in his legs kind of uh, you know an impact type player um, there's there's a few of those type of players that uh, that's coming from the bench that's really making an impact these these days. You know where before I felt I don't know how much the All Blacks bench did make a, a difference. So I do feel that there's there's definitely some firepower coming from that bench. D Mac is a real X factor when he comes on. You know he, he can make a big influence on the game as well. Um, the only things that I think I personally think that the All Blacks will probably look to change in their team will probably be. I would definitely put uh, Scott Barrett, but they might look at impact again. But I think for a big game like this, I would take Scott Barrett, put him on the bench and bring Retallick in with Whitelock on the locks. But <clears throat> I mean, apart from that, I would when I'm looking at that team, I'd probably just, um, I wouldn't change much, man. The only thing I would do, but I'm, I have to stop that. I have to let it go. But I still believe there's something going on with Cam Roygaard because... The fact that Cam Roygaard is not being picked uh, when he was picked right through this World Cup and then they had this whole thing with Talia and Roygaard not making the team and then suddenly Roygaard's just dropped. Talia comes back in and Roygaard's just dropped. Roygaard is too much of a quality player. We see what he was probably the only guy who really performed really well the last time when we, they played us, you know, um, when we had that kind of bit of a blowout. So... Um, I would have just liked to see Roygaard there. I just think he's, he brings the injection onto the field that, that um, yeah. <clears throat> I think that potentially just comes down to experience and, mm. you know, the, what the BMT kind of factor that plays into that a little bit and, and it might have given him some exposure and then you know, he's, he's definitely the new guard, but you don't want to go and break a lad's uh, confidence in yeah. a big match like this where, you know, there's going to be a tremendous amount of pressure on, on the scrummy. Mm. And, um, you know, maybe just ease him into it and you know, mm. got some World Cup Look, experience I mean, under the belt. And, uh, it's not Roy you know, first time playing. Around. It's not his first time playing against the Springboks. So I just felt that he's ready. I felt he's ready. Like, I mean, the last game, he was he performed better than uh, Nagy, than Smith. He, he performed better than Smith in that specific game. Um there's just no way. Even Christie on his best form is not a, a half-performing Roygaard, in my opinion. Christie just does what he needs to do, and that's about it. Like, I know there's probably fans of him, but what I've seen of that guy and how many games, he's never impressed me. He's just there. Um, and yeah, he, he no, does I, his job. I rate Roygaard as well, but, but yeah. I can only imagine it comes down to experience. I, I can't mm-hmm. think there's any other reason to it other than maybe just... Yeah, lack of experience for the the big games. Maybe, maybe let's go with that. I say there's something else going on there because uh, you you even see the game when the last game they didn't even want to bring Christie on. They just kept Smith on the on the field because they were too too kind of nervous to put him. On. It was a tight game, but not the Argentinian and game. That's the game experience. Before. Yeah, yeah, that that's just that's that's the experience, right? The, the yeah. ability to absorb the, that pressure. Yeah, but um, we, I'm not saying don't play don't play Smith. I'm saying, what if Smith gets an injury early? Do you want a Christie there or do yeah. you want a Roygaard there? I mean, Christie, Christie's got to do nothing more than a Roygaard for you. That's all I'm saying. Look, I'm a, I'm, I'm a big fan. When Will Jordan came onto the scene, I was a big fan of him. I still think he's amazing. Mark the Lear from the, from the All Blacks are amazing. And Roygaard are amazing players. They are the future of their team. And... And the fact that they won't play him in the finals like that, you know, they are playing the other two. But I think this guy, uh, I just, I doubt it because the others were also kind of young players, you know, all the others. I, I just feel there's more to it, but who knows? Maybe I'm just a little bit too much of a fan. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I shouldn't even be complaining because it's we here now. It's Springboks versus All Blacks, so I really don't actually mind. Put Christy on, you know. Let, <laughs> let Peter Steph the toy smash him. <laughs> uh, what, what's your take on the the box bench plan for? This oh, weekend. I see, I see what, I see what you're doing here. Yeah? I see what you're doing here. Yeah? I like it. I like it. Flipping, flipping the chairs here. Yeah? It's like, who's the host? No, I'm joking. No, I, I like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's think about it. So, I mean, I've made some notes. I, I think probably, you know, we got to go 6-2 because the, the two reasons why I'd say go 6-2 is the first one is if you think of if it's wet. You know, you really want more kind of like a forward type game. And, and, I, and that's the only thing that concerns me. That the thing with the Springboks is if you look at the last two games, they were really playing type of like, I think they were just wanting to play a rugby game, a running game, a running game. So if you look at the game against England, I think they were going out there to run, not taking into consideration we're playing in France where it's quite often wet and the running game kind of blew up on us a bit. Um, I think they want to change the brand of rugby and they've been successful at times, you know, some of our games it was very successful, but I do think, you know, Rossi and them have to look at this game and say, look, we got to go back to using logic. What, how did we beat the All Blacks the last time? You know, I know it was before the World Cup, but how did we beat them? We played them with a 6-2 split and we really, you know, challenged them up front. The breakdowns we were just too good to good for him, them in that last game and that's the way we have to play and i hope that they switch it up now to say okay we've gone for this 5-3 5-3 but let's go 6-2 and and let's go out there with a bomb squad and try and do maybe even what they've done before we bring them all on at once and kind of bring that big impact on it's worked for us before and i would say why go mess around with it go play it again don't know what you, you think. think they're gonna pull the seven one <clears throat> nah <laughs> nah nah not this one mate uh, uh, <laughs> imagine no nah. in a world cup yeah imagine eh? <laughs> imagine now you're making me think imagine but i, I can't see it if we go six two do you think there's space for money or is uh money gonna drop uh, off the golden question there <laughs> um for me that's again it's just out of my thinking i don't we don't know how Rossi goes. You've said it before and I've said it before. Um, it's for me, what I think Rossi will do is I, I think that they will do is they will keep Pollock for second half. The reason why they'll keep Pollock for second half is he's basically was the difference for the points in us winning the last two games. I mean, you can say it's the try, it's a this, it's a this. It's those, those four kicks that he was able to put through. It was both in the second half. He's needed there at the end. But now you can say you need the scoreboard pressure at the start. But I just think that we have enough guys. Like Marnie's not been kicking badly. Um, that uh, Marnie would still start, in my opinion. Marnie would start this game. I'm just thinking out of a, a, a Springbok perspective. We don't really have other specialized kickers. To try and get a Willemser or the clerk to want to kick now to post it's not the right time. We've got the form between Marnie and, and Pollard for me. So I would say they're going to play Marnie again with Quibbus. Believe it or not, that's what I think. That will be your, your two guys on the bench will be a Pollard and a Fafta Cliff. That will be my, the two guys, uh, I'd say. Eric uh, and Willis really getting the boot or Damien yeah. getting the, the boot off the starting lineup? That's the one that I'm battling with. Eh? That's such a good question because... If you think about it, like, if we look at the last game, you know, if it's going to be wet like that again, Willemse, to me, was not good uh, under the high ball. At all. He doesn't, but he, he doesn't like the high ball, to be honest. Like, I've seen him take some high balls, but I've not seen him be really bombarded with high balls. And, and it, it almost seemed like he was getting a little bit, like, rattled under the high balls because there was, he was battling with a lot of them. Um, it's, it's almost like his whole game fell apart for me a little bit. That's what I saw um so i mean for that reason i, I don't know it's so odd because i like Will willem some more as a running type rugby player i don't like Villies complaining on the field all the time and i don't like Villies handling too much in general he, he makes quite a lot of handling mistakes quite, quite often 
So, but Vili's running running game really is dangerous. And the other thing with Vili is, is I think he is better under that high ball. So, I, I've, if if I can think about it, I'm going to go here on the limb and say they probably might go. We might be shocked and they go for a Vili Larue in this game, and and not a Willem yeah, set. I, I agree, and Vili Vili showed again that uh, you know, even though he like occasionally knock on a ball or whatever, he brings some calmness to the decision making in the back mm. line. Mm. Um, you know, he he might like kind of initiate the the penalty drive up the field with you know, mm. calling the the scrum off the mark again, mm. which was. Uh, having a big debate with the other players on the field there. It's like, that, that, this is what we're going to be doing now. Mm. And, um, yeah, uh, it, it wouldn't be a total surprise. Kanan, I also think they, they're going to have to go to a 6 to Moody and Krill? For this one. Which, we, who you uh, Yeah. Or Moody and Aaron I, I, I don't think, I don't think they'll bring Moody in after having not played him in the, the previous two, two matches. And again, you know, you didn't mention Lukanya Am at all. No. Uh, I also don't think they, they haven't no. given him any game time. In Makes the no sense. So eh? I, I, I would be very surprised if they now suddenly bring him in for the final. And having said that, then uh, you know, that might be the, the one regret. <laughs> You know, with there not really being any space for Lukanya Am, um, yeah, no it's, idea it's of what the team would be. Pointless now. You know, that... I still want to stay with just a little bit more there with the Springbok team selection. And then I uh, wanted to ask you, I've given mine. Uh, one more question for Mielin or Visa to start. I think if, if we're going for the 6-2 split, then they bring Visa on. Um it would probably be starting with Visa, and then uh, Rossi seems to be going with the having the old hands and the experienced Oaks coming off the bench to close out the game. Um, and you'd probably find Fumilan, uh, you know, making his way onto the park around 50 odd minutes, nothing 45, 50 minutes, mm -hmm. um, and taking control of the defensive line. Okay, and you also going for six two? It seems like it. And who's your fly offs? And how do you break it up? Your fly offs and your scrum offs. The golden question. And who's yeah. your fullback? Oh, you said Vili. Yeah. For fullback. Yeah, that, yeah, Vili. I, I think there'd probably be space for him there. Um, it, and then it it will probably end up in a point toss with a. Yeah, you hang on to Damien or. Marnie, I'm, I'm not sure Marnie... Still want to drop Marnie. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it's mixed, man. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, Look, I mean, if if, uh, if, if Willem I, I said more kick got, time, but he, I just feel... Well, it's got 80 minutes in him. He can play 80 minutes. And, yeah, but you you got to think of the injury. Yeah. you got to think of the injury. You gotta think if, yeah. if if ten minutes in and and then you know a knee or a whatever or his injury if he gets injury again the same injury is what he had, just saying like he's just actually come off of rehabilitation. We're not saying we want that to happen at all. I'm just saying that if if I look at a second option and 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 actually Marnie is in good form right now. With his kicking, he's kicking a lot better. So um, I'm just like that's the only reason why I go Marnie is because I wouldn't want to see. Faf or or um, Willemsen now having to kick to the posts as a second option. I'd uh, love to see Pollard right through a game, but I do think that, I just think, I don't know if you agree there, but I do think that it's been twice now where Pollard's come off the bench and he's made a huge impact. He's had that important kick. I don't think they'll turn it around because they would be concerned for Marnie having to take that final kicks. And they, w they won't play Pollard a full game. It's just, it's not... Well, I'm saying won't like uh -huh. I know, but I'm just saying you you've seen the patterns. They play impact, so they are gonna play. Um, I do think they will play two two fly offs again. I can't see them veer from that. Would be interesting if they do that. You're probably, probably right. <clears throat> I don't know. Mm. It's yeah, what you want versus what they want. 
<laughs> no, come on. I mean, might not super brute because come on. I see what uh, the squad is going to look really? like. Really? Really? Wow. So you feel that you, you, you'd go call All Blacks on this one? No, no, no. I'll still uh, in the box, but uh, just thought I'm going to get an idea of what the margin is going to be mean, on that one. I wouldn't be able to, to live with myself. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night <laughs> <laughs> if I had to pick All Blacks for this one. I just can't. I can't go against my box. Doesn't matter what I suspect. Yeah, so from the bench, I think nothing will really change all that much. I think they just have an extra option there, you know. Um, you know, but you have your normal guys, your Kwaha, your Furi, uh, your Inche. Um, the thing is, Inche, as much as I would like him to see him start, he's been so good coming in in that second half again and coming in with that fresh le legs and that impact. Um, and then, yeah, the rest of your guys will be a Snayman. I wouldn't necessarily, I, do, I wonder if they'll go for two locks just because of the, the impact of the weight and big guys coming in. What do you think that bench going to look like? Yeah. Talking about the forwards, the six forwards. Yeah, I, I think the, the front rows will be the same combinations, just you know, maybe change the, the way around they, they start, but it probably not change on that. It seems to be working pretty well. But they have one extra um, then if they go six. Kitsu yeah, so one extra. Yeah, the, the extra forward would probably be Visa, Visa coming in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah, agree with you. Kwaha there. He's, he's been doing well. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm you with know, you. I'm we'll with maybe you. bring in Klein, the, the extra lock, uh, give another line-out option. Uh, if it becomes a territorial game, um, but it also brings weight and, and size. You know, uh, you know, you bring a, someone like a Klein on with a name and it's it's two big guys. You know, especially as an impact on a second half. I do feel we got to go back. That's that was John Klein and Arkis Neyman before. If we want to go the six-two bomb squad thing, let's go for some big boys, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like get the full. yeah. But let's see what yeah, they it's do. Probably fair comment. Mm. Yeah. Maybe they go five three again, and then uh, yeah, maybe they want to run, and that's that's I would say the only thing in my opinion. Like, um, I wanted to ask you, but maybe I'll segue into that: is how do the Springboks win this game? And and for me, the only way that I feel the Springboks win this game is not to try and run like they were running France. I, I don't see that game plan working against the All Blacks. They need to kind of first for me secure it up front and kind of win that 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 breakdown battle. It sounds like you know the same old cliche, but it, every time it's worked for the Springboks. Even if you look at the last one where we we won quite far, we were beating the All Blacks at the breakdown, and we've got so much guys even to come from the bench if we do that six-two split. That with all the kind of guys coming from the bench and all the impact, you just run the All Blacks off their feet kind of in the forwards. And then we can start also playing a bit, bit of running rugby. But if we allow them to get the quick ball and not compete enough in the breakdowns, and we, we also want to play the running type game like we've done with France, and even the kicking game. I mean, you know, the All Blacks have got quite a good kicking game. They've got a lot of players on there that can kick. You know, you've got the Mwanga, both Barrett's. You've got DMAC from the bench, so... Uh, I, I don't think we, we mind the kicking game, and I don't think we mind the running game. Um, you know, it, it will probably play to, to some of our strengths. We'll be able to see the rush defence, and at, at the end of the day, that's where our tries come from, is, mm. you know, forcing that error on, on defence, and yes. then, you know, we move it wide from the, the turnover ball. And... Yeah. If like this weekend's game, England, I don't think the ball ever went past Owen Farrell once. It went mm. either box kick or um, nine to ten, and then it went up yeah. up in the air. Yeah. There, there was no no opportunity for our defence to to get involved and you know to get that turn turnover to to get the back line moving at all. I would, um, I would just like to see some phase play. Like what I'm saying, phase play. Us building some phases together. We've been a team that's become a team that play four or five phases and then run it. I just would like to see a few more phases. Just just to just kind of like slow it down just a little. 
because it feels to me like we take more control of the game when we play a bit more phased which is not what we've seen as much let me just if i could flip it around what do you think the all blacks have to do to beat the springboks keep the the game in our half that we kick it back at them uh and yeah if they're gonna run it back at us uh it's gonna come down to their running game versus our defensive game and i think that's what we want um where if you play on territory and you just play in the other team's half or you know deep in their half uh it becomes a little bit negative in the ground but um mm. we that that's when we're not going to set up base play we're going to be kicking it back because we won't have any intention of playing uh between the 10 meters and our 22 uh we'll kick it deep or put the cross kick and up and under and try and contest it uh, I, I think it's going to be a better quality game than what we saw this last weekend because i, I don't think the, the kind of native play or you know like safe play that england did it comes naturally to all blacks no. and I, I can't really see them changing their gameplay i think they will because kick, it was though. effective against us they will kick, but they'll they kick, won't but kick that much. Not as much. No, no, no. They'll still they're, run. They're, they'll still <laughs> they can't not their run. arm and, and run it yeah. because that's their natural game. And, mm. you know, I think if they force themselves to kick everything at us like England did, mm. they, they'll struggle because that's not their DNA and their game. That, that will try and be trying to copy something that yeah. was effective, but it's not your game might no. not be effective for you and i don't think they're the type of team that try and play other people's games they play their own type no. of game but I'm, i must also say that i think for me the springboks need to just play a, a clever territorial game because we were even struggling a bit with the territorial game to play in the all blacks half because one thing that i've seen with the all blacks that that i think is a bit of a weakness of them is they don't exit out of their own half so they want to try and run everything with our type rush defense if if they can't get the little kicks over our heads to kind of expose some space um that rush defense when they're trying to not exit from their own halves and try and run the ball of our rush defense if we start catching them in in their their half we can convert that into a lot of points and we can build that scoreboard pressure which is i think something they should be looking at you know kind of keep kicking deeper and trying to put the pressure onto them in their half you know so it's kind of similar to what you said uh, play in their half which is yeah play play their half make sure that we put that pressure on them all the time because they do for me sometimes not exit well um even against argentina i saw that some of their kicks was poor exiting out of their half and then they just start running it and i think there's a bit of false confidence with the running game against argentina that it can be done against anyone um it's not going to be that easy against the springboks Anyhow, Rian, so um, yeah, last thing that I want to ask you is uh, score prediction. What do you think score prediction is going to be? Just how ma margin, like you do at Super Brew, who will win by how many? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's going to be within five points either way, less than a score. I, I think we're in for a pretty close game. If it's trying dry conditions uh, i think it'll probably be like 25 odd points aside 20 to 25 somewhere around there uh if it's wet conditions we might be seeing a low scoring game like 10 12 points kind of uh to the winning side yeah Very I've, low scoring i've got it with four points win for springboks i think it's going to be another close one but anyway yeah, yeah we will learn yeah. We'll go for the one, right? Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll take one. That's fine, especially in the finals. We just give us one. <laughs> oh, no, Rian, it's been awesome chatting to you again, man. I appreciate you always. Hopefully, the next time that you and me can have a chat is when we, um, we celebrate the win of the Springboks. Oh, yeah. That'll be that awesome. will be good. So what must the guys do? The what, what, what must the guys do, Rian? Watch rugby? And no, fun. no, come on, man. Please, for once. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Guys, please hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and uh, you enjoyed me and Rian's chat. We appreciate every one of you. 
and all the support you've given us. We've actually been getting some views on our videos lately, uh, Rian, which is uh, awesome. And uh, yeah, I hope we can keep this going.